What have you enjoyed most about the last season of Once Upon a Time? Well, you know, getting to do this arc as Ursula is, you know, it's just been unbelievable. And to work with Victoria Smurfit and Kristen Bauer, um, I mean, the whole group has been, everybody at Once Upon a Time, it's a really amazing team. And they work hard. They make like a movie in 10 days, you know. Um, but particularly because I got to work with these girls so closely, they're so brave and funny and smart and you know we just had it was like the you know supernatural charlie's angels we just had a ball <laughs> what was it like going in and just essentially just messing everything up for all the other major characters? oh gosh there's nothing like it like getting to go in there and just like just cause havoc you know but but you know when we started we were all really tentative because these are iconic cre you know creatures characters and um you know you don't want to mess it up you know and i i know that Kristen didn't watch Maleficent and you know Vic just kept looking to the cartoon and you know I I, I was trying to match the you know the, the voice you know because obviously I'm not like you know overweight and purple like you know you know and <laughs> with tentacles you know but um you know just trying to find out like what what it is about me that I can bring to this to make it like my own and um we had a wonderful director John Emile who's also British and he uh really helped us set the tone to find these find these gals and Lot, you know, Vic and I got to do a lot of stuff together, which was amazing. And we sort of found our own little, like, you know, vibrational Starsky and Hutch kind of, like, you know, back and forth, which I think the fans really responded to. Uh, can I ask what attracted you to this world that you, you saw and said, oh, I have to do this? Well, they called and asked. So that's always the, you know, first <laughs> thing of, like, what? But, like, the idea, like, me? Really? You want me for this? It's, like, the most exciting thing to be a part of something that's this, you know, a, to be asked to do such an iconic character, but also to be a part of this incredible world that is Once Upon a Time. You know, it's such a, it's so well crafted, it's so well thought out, and it's just a lot of fun. So you jump at that chance. You say, yes, please, when, how soon can I get there? What do you need and what can I do? And can I, you know, color my hair blonde? And like, what, you know, what do you need from me? So, you know, that is, you know, I, I, I'm not at that point at which that I get to let go, oh, which role in the world do I want to do? Like, I don't have that like luxury, you know? But um, when somebody calls and asks you to do something like this, you, you know, thank your lucky stars. So no doubts then? <laughs> no, no, it's, it's no doubts about like wanting to do it. Um, there's doubt in like, what am I doing? You know, how, how do I do it? Not, not can I do it? How do I do it? And in fact, the first episode that we did do, we shot a scene um, or a couple scenes in, the, in this episode that was the winter finale break with a director named Ralph Hamaker, who's lovely. Um, but, you know, they were already in the middle of doing all this stuff and like we were flown in to like just start in this big, you know, scene. So there wasn't a lot of time to like sort of like figure out what was happening. So, I, you know, first like we come in and I'm throw this tent. First of all, I had to learn how to throw tentacles from, you know, my pelvis, you know, which <laughs> aren't there and uh, um, that are CGI and, and you know, get, uh, bell around the you know around the neck and i kept wanting to use my hands you know because when you fight you want to like put your dukes up and like, put your hands down like those aren't your tentacles and it's like right 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 you know so like if you literally watch that first scene there's like like i'm like fighting pulling my hands up so it's how to do it you know and then once you got in the groove of figuring out like you know how to throw a tentacle you know it, you know as you do you know on a you know I mean, obviously, um, Disney's full of iconic heroes, but I think for most people, Ursula remains the most scary villain, the one that kind of resonates. Uh, do you have early memories of watching the cartoon and kind of that affecting you in any way? Um, well, I think I was um, <clears throat> a little older than a kid when the movie came out, but um, so it didn't scare me as much as I think it. Like when I first watched it with my daughter, she was terrified. Like we, we couldn't get past that. Like, we had to stop at that and turn it off. And then, like slowly, we've gotten you know back to it, and and then my little one won't even go on the ride at Disneyland. Like that's it. Like forget it. Ursula like terrifies her. Um, but uh, I, yeah, I didn't really think that. I didn't. I didn't realize how scary. But I think because she's this, she's really a monster, you know. And one of the things that they always say in Once Upon a Time that like evil isn't born, it's made. And which I loved about my whole backstory on the. I don't know if you guys have gotten it here yet, but. Um, you know, how, how I became, you know, but I choose, like, I chose to be a monster, a monster, not just this, you know, like, uh, Victoria is still a, a woman, you know, there's still a person in there. I think she, the way they told the story, it's actually, she's much scarier than I am, but, um, you know, to be a creature is, is really, I think that's what makes her so scary that she's, she's a beast and, um, and so fierce and not afraid to like just kill. 
Um, and I think that you don't see that so readily. The other villains are more wicked and manipulative and um, they cast spells. Mm. You know, mine's just like, I'll get you. And I think that's what's so scary is that I'll just get you. I mean, you said that, I mean, obviously your kids are scared of Ursula. How do they feel about the fact that mommy is Ursula? <laughs> yeah, well, it took a minute. Uh, my older one is, um, you know, I would I would FaceTime. I'd call them on the, you know, computer. And if I was in character, you know, I didn't have the tentacles because those are CGI. But if I had, um, you know, just in the makeup, because the makeup is so incredible and the hair and the, you know, and the little one would just be like, that's still you, right? You're you're still in there. And I said, yeah, it's still mommy. It's just mommy, you know. Um, but uh, so, it, it, but the funny thing was the little one would love love to watch it. And the older one was like, I'm good. I got to go do anything but watch this right now because it's just too much. What would you see like, what do you like to see happening going ahead for Ursula now? If you're well, sadly, about Ursula got her happy ending, you know. Um, sorry to spoiler on in uh, England. Yeah, you got your voice back. I did. I got my voice back. So, um, but the good news a bit about, you know, Once Upon a Time is that nobody dies, you know, and nobody stays happy for too long. So hopefully <laughs> I'll uh, be able to resurface in that world. What would you like to see if you do come back to the show? What would you like to happen? You know, I just would like to be utilized as a way that, like, when they need something, you know, handled, like, like she's like the fixer, you know, she's the town fixer, you know, whether it's like for good or for ill, you know, you call on her for, you know, I think that would be kind of fun to just be of service Has to gold or the good. To return? I beg your pardon. Has there been any talks for you to return next season? Well, you know, they uh, were so busy wrapping up the end of the season, like they haven't yet figured out what the storyline is next for the next year. But like I said, you know, they brought Zelina back, you know, from Oz, and you just never know. You never know. Um, your character originally started off um, as a mermaid and then became like a tentacled monster. Mm -hmm. um, would you like to see your character revert back to being a mermaid or staying as a tentacled type creature? I think tentacled like creature because then you can do more things, you know, like mermaid, mermaid, you know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> yeah, it's pretty and whatever, but like, you know, that, you know, my tentacled beast can, she can take care of stuff. She can reach things. She can slap people. It's good. <laughs> Who doesn't want that skill? Um, uh, the fa obviously, the fans of Once Upon a Time are very prolific on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. How different do you think the characters in Once Upon a Time would be if they had access to social media while they're trying to do their deeds? <laughs> oh my god! Wow, that's a good one. Um, you know, I think that the villains, the the villains would run it. You know, because they, the, you know, they'd be able to like cull a you know a nice uh, audience of you know supporters because everybody likes a bad guy you know I think the heroes would be too busy battling like you know for good to get their their way to make it uh, to spend time on social media you know unless they're like we lost him again we can't find Henry you know <laughs> <laughs> like call out the armed guards how do you think the character adjusted to working in an aquarium for 20 years Oh, she, I don't, she didn't like that at all, you know, but those are her babies we had a whole like some of it got cut but in the first episode where I worked with John and uh, the director and you know he was like those are your, those are your children you know and like all those I love how they set that whole you know space up it was just like these are my children and I get to be with them so as much as like she didn't like shoveling you know fish shit and all that sort of thing um, <coughs> she still got to be with her people you know and you know and it just made sense with the ties to Disney have you got a particular favorite Disney film I love the Pixar I love all the Disney Pixar films um, in particular the Toy Story series is just I mean, I wept like a baby at that last, you know, movie. Like I was holding hands with my sister, and they're like holding hands, like going that that thing, and we're and she's like forty five, and we're like, <laughs> you know, because we kind of grew up with that, you know, to watch that whole journey. Like those are they're just. I mean, Disney knows how to pull the heartstrings, don't they? But those are especially wonderful. I mean, obviously you mentioned earlier on that there's a there's a physicality to Ursula, but also the vocal performance, particularly in the original um, cartoon, is, is so, so so iconic. Can you talk a little bit about how you found? Uh, that aspect of the character. Well, you know, I think that for me, that was my, you know, you got to find your way in, you know, I, I always say like when I go in for a part, and that's the thing, like that's good and bad about being offered something is that like you, um, you're so unsettling with that mask on, it's freaking me out. <laughs> I was like, what's happening? Um, you know, when you, when you go into audition for something, at least for me, I have to find, uh, if I, if I know what that character wears, I know 
I, I feel really great about when I walk in. You know, I mean, like some things when you go in to play, like you know, like a detective or you know, like it's very plain, it's very simple. But there is sort of like everyone has their uniform, whether it's a mom or a. Um, you know, it's like, what kind of mom? And like, what kind of cop? You know, is it a beat cop? Is it a detective? Like, there is a way to walk in. What shoes are you wearing? And what are you, you know, how? Like, for me, that's my way in. It's like putting on some sort of costume. And um, <clears throat> with Ursula, because, you know, it was, you know, I was asked to do it. I didn't know what, you know, and also it's like, what do you, what do you bring to this? How do you, you know, and the voice was the best way because I do have a low voice and I do have sort of that, you know, I can match that cadence, you know, um, that uh, the voice actress whose name escapes me right now, but she was so incredible, you know. Um, it's just this, that's what you can bring. That's what I could bring. And are there particular lines that you really love saying in that voice? <laughs> um, God, you know, it's so funny. My my daughter in the preschool, like all her friends were always like, do Ursula! Like they want me to come up and like say something, you know. Um, but yes, there was uh, a particular line in the episode of my backstory where... Um, <laughs> where uh, Hook and I are trying to get my the, get the seashell to work to bring my voice back and and I said um, I said and I'm not, I don't even know if I can match it in the voice but um, I said don't mess with a woman with uh, eight arms don't 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 try and take on a woman with eight arms especially when you only have one you know and it's just like now she bitch slaps him and it's, you just feel like such a tough guy you know it's always great to get like those great lines. I mean, talking about um, tough characters, do you think that one of the secrets of the show's success is that so many of the strong characters, the most interesting characters, tend to be the girls? Wow. Um, well, that, you know, is... You know, I think that... It, when you look at Disney, all the all the interesting characters are women, you know, and for the most part in those, you know, Disney stories. And... Um, uh, and the fairy tales, you know, it's that they're the protagonists, and then they're the they're the they're the protagonists, and they're also the villains. Um, so you're, you're already given that service, you know. Um, but we're lucky on Once Upon a Time, you know, the writers are so, you know, Robert and I mean, I'm, uh, I'm sorry, <laughs> I was like, I was like, I was thinking about something else. Um, the, uh, they they have c created these beautiful women and these beautiful characters that are so fun to watch, and then you've got Lana and. Ginny and, you know, Jennifer there who bring to life these, you know, inc they fill it, you know. But I, but people love the villains the most. They love Robert, they love, who is not a woman, but they love Robert, they love L I mean, Lana. They People like flip out, you know, if you say anything about Lana Perea. Like they just like, fall apart because she's just this majestic creature, you know, and it's in, 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 in life and in, you know, art, she is that. I was happy to be a part of that, you know. Obviously, they're always bringing lots of new great characters into the show. Who would you love to see brought into that world moving forward? Wow, I mean, there's, I, you know, I feel like they've they've literally, you know, mined that, you know, well, deep. So I, I, I you're asking a very jet lagged lady, <laughs> a very, uh, uh, I would have to think about who, you know. But like, you know, I. I was surprised they were able to bring Ursula in there, you know, like in, in, in the way that they did. It's, 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 you know, I just feel lucky.